You're listening to the Martin Clinic Wellness Podcast. This is the show where we bring you the best tips, tricks, and nutritional hacks to help you and your family get healthier. You will also hear what works and doesn't work so that you don't have to waste your time and money. All right, let's get started. Hello, my name is Dr. Tony Martin Jr. of the Martin Clinic, and I'm here with my dad, Dr. Tony Martin Sr., also of the Martin Clinic. And today we want to talk about that study that came out a few weeks ago that got massive, massive play. Uh, You know, every once in a while a study comes out and the media grabs a hold of it and runs with it. Uh, It just makes for great news, great little soundbite, perfect uh, you know, just one of those yeah. things, right? It's shared on Facebook. It's just, it's tweeted about. It's talked about. And uh, so this study here that we're talking about, of course, is that a study that linked diet soda to higher risks of stroke and dementia. And, uh, you know, the sound bites on this thing were all over the place, yeah. right? I mean, a lot of people yeah. emailed us asking us questions about this uh, study uh, and the implications of this study. Um and, you know, because, I mean, a lot of people uh, are, you know, rightfully given up sugar, so they've switched over to Diet Coke. And we'll talk about sweeteners uh, a little bit on this uh, podcast yeah, episode coming up. Yeah, people are always asking about us anyway. And we right? kind of have a three-step thing that we go yeah. through when we talk about sweeteners that we, you know, we kind of look at. So we'll, we'll, talk, we'll share that with you at the end. But first, let's talk about this. Yeah, because I sent you after the study, right? Like what I mean is, is that folks we read. I I I don't know how many studies I read every day, and uh, I look at it if it's interesting to me. I'll really look into it. Otherwise, but this one is interesting because, you know, I mean, well, it, it got great it, headlines, it got right? Great headlines. I mean, it's it just looked at one of those things. So and, you went and you know you yeah, you, and you chased down the story and found out what kind of a study it was, right? Well, just you know, and again, let's preface this by saying. Uh, you know, we're not, you know, we're not big fans of Diet Coke, Diet no, Pepsi. No, of course not. We're not, we're not saying go ahead and drink these things in any way. Drink water, drink coffee. Absolutely, right? We're not, mm. we're not here to defend no. drinking diet soda. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, it, this is just a bad study. It's a bad paper uh, all around. And we'll talk about why that is in a few minutes. But really, this study doesn't say anything. It doesn't, it, it's just... If this is the uh, proof that somebody was looking for, uh, it's not the smoking it, gun. No, right? unfortunately, this study is not it. And again, uh, we'll talk about sweeteners, and we'll talk about that in a few yeah, minutes. Because but there are some good ones that you can you, that you can certainly. Uh, yeah, there are. Know. We have our definite favorite types yeah. of sweeteners that we like, and we'll talk about our criteria coming up. But uh, this, let's just talk about this study for a little bit first. Well, you know, first of all, this study showed a strong association between diet soda. Uh, and the risk of both str- uh, strokes and, and, and dementia, dementia yeah. right? So, I mean, that's a scary thing, right? If you have a diet soda a day, you're basically going to die of a stroke or have dementia. That's what the study essentially was, the headlines that were telling you. That was the headline, yeah. That's what the headlines are telling yeah. you. So let's let's talk about a few things in the study, why it's garbage. You know, really, it's, it is a garbage study, unfortunately. It's a bad, bad paper. Mm-hmm. Uh, first and foremost, again, whenever we talk in science or in research about associations— Associations uh, does not prove anything. Uh, and, you know, we've gone over this before, even on meat studies, we've talked about this, right? Yeah. Uh, causation and association. They're uh, poor studies. They are, because there's a lot of things you have to take into account when you do a study, and we'll, we'll show you why in a second, why the study didn't do that. First, uh, you know, why this is yeah. really, this is, unfortunately, it really isn't a good study. So when we're talking about associations, right? Like, you know, we give the example all the time, uh, you know, that pirates are the cause of global warming. And, you know, because, you know, I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, pirates are only found in warm climates. Therefore, pirates have to be somehow related in some way to global warming. Yeah. Just like the uh, percentage of countries that eat more chocolate uh, win the Nobel Prize. Yeah. So that must be the chocolate, right? Yeah. It's it just, again, it's it, it, the, the associations, there's so many factors that you would yeah. have to account yeah. Yeah. in a study, an association study. Well, you know, I remember, you know, when you you looked at one on the the red meat, right? And how bad it was. While well, the people at yeah, but were they eating red meat at McDonald's with the French fries? 
well, drinking and that's, the that's uh, a thing, drinking right? the soda with uh, you know eight to ten to twelve teaspoons of sugar. Smokers. Well, there were a lot of things, right? Well, this is a cor- this this is a correlation study. Mm-hmm. Correlations, and we can't say this enough times. When you do, when you look at a correlation study, correlation does not prove causation, because like we said, you can correlate pirates to global warming. You can correlate Nobel prizes to countries that eat uh, higher amounts of chocolate, right? You can also correlate the amount of Nicolas Cage movies you eat to death in a swimming pool, right? So the more Nicolas Cage movies you watch, the more likely you are to die in a, a death in a swimming pool. You could correlate one with the other, but it's so stupid because, I mean, there's so many factors involved that are in between you watching the Nicolas Cage movie and dying in a swimming pool. So it's important to understand this, right? No. Well, and the, the example that we use all the time uh, it'd be like blaming firefighters for fires because they're at the scene of every fire, so therefore they must be, you know, they must be causing the fire. They must be the bad guy. So that's the first thing. This mm-hmm. is a this is a correlation study. That's all it is, which is a low... It's not a form of proof, really. It's on the... If you were to put a pyramid together of evidence-based research, this is at the bottom of the pyramid, for sure. I mean, that's just first and foremost. And then I'm going to read you a quote from the study itself, from the authors of the study, all right? And, and you'll see why this is problematic. This is what they say. Finally, we did not adjust for multiple comparisons, meaning that some findings may be attributable to chance. All right, so they say that themselves right in the study. So when you evaluate a study, there's something that they call the p-value in statistics. And I'm not going to get into too much... Deb, because even when I speak about it, I'm going to fall asleep just talking about it because, it, you know, statistics, yeah. uh, it, you know, I, I apologize. Yeah, I apologize to those of you who listen and who like statistics. I don't. But let me just say this. The p-value helps determine the significance of your results. And as a rule of thumb, a p-value of less than 0.5, so statistically, a p-value of less than 0.5, basically you reject the hypothesis. It's not it's not significant, no. No. right? So in this study, somebody else went and did the math in this study. And I, I find this interesting. If you adjust for the 90-plus comparisons in the study, you get a p-value of 0.0005. So it's a bad paper. It is. It is. Yeah. There's nothing out of it that you. No, you can't draw at. any conclusions no. from the study whatsoever. None. But the media drew a lot, right? Yeah, because they love correlation studies because you yeah. can correlate anything. Correlation studies, like I we talked about just a few minutes ago, are what they do in meat because they will say meat eaters meat eating meat is co- correlated with increased colon cancer, but what they don't tell you in the study, they don't adjust. They're not adjusting for the yeah. the variables. Like, is this meat eater a smoker? Is this meat eater a drinker? Is this meat eater exercise? Are we talking about meat from McDonald's? Are we talking about you know organic uh, or grass fed or steak? No, we're, uh, that's the problem. You can see you can't lump somebody in who's eating meat with the same person who's eating meat, smoking, drinking, not but exercising. But it fits your narrative. Well, of course, right? and that's and the that, problem that's with studies. That's the issue, right, folks? So understand that whenever you get a study of any kind just remember if it's fitting their narrative or not right yeah and and you could spin it and that's the thing yeah. so all this all you would do with this study here is that you would say to yourself okay we could correlate the two of them but is there any is there any real significance here you'd have to go on further and do double blind random you know there, there's a whole bunch yeah. of ways that you would have to increase the 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 proof in this study. This doesn't do it. It's a yeah. bad paper. It yeah. it it's almost as if the paper was written to get headlines. Because it just they didn't you know, them admittedly themselves, they didn't they didn't adjust for the comparisons or anything. So it's a it's a bad study. So bottom line is does this study show that if you drink a diet soda a day you're gonna have a stroke? No, it does not show that. It doesn't show that. So, you know, a, a lot of you people were nervous. Uh you know, we had a lot of emails about that and uh, again, we're not saying, we're not saying go drink diet pop. We're not, no. 
we're just looking at the study because that's what we do a lot of times. We read a lot of studies. Because we get people asking us, right? And we're not. And it caught my eye. To be honest with you, when I saw the headline of this thing, it caught my eye. Right, the study caught my eye because it's interesting. I retweeted it. Yeah, because it just, I mean, it was an interesting study, right? I mean, it's like, wow, this might be... Then I sick the dogs after And it. then you start, yeah, and then you just read through the study at yeah. first. You're like, ah, oh, it's a correlation study. It doesn't say anything. And then you find out they didn't adjust for any comparisons. And then the statistical value of it is garbage. So it's, it's just not a good paper. So if you were worried about this paper, don't. Yeah. This paper is not it. Yeah. Right? So this is not this is not something here that you would, you would yeah. use so as... So this leads us to the other questions we get asked and we've talked about this before, we've done podcasts on it too, is, okay, what do you what do you drink, first of all? Yeah, all we, obviously, then, I mean, everybody knows the answer to this, yeah. right? I mean, it's, yeah. it, it first first and foremost, you know, something that we've talked about before many times off the air, and I don't know if we talked about this on a podcast, is you have to earn other kind of liquids, right? Like, you, you have to earn them first. You have to drink your water, and you have to earn them. So... You know, when it comes to fluids, if you're not drinking water, that's where you have to start. Yeah. Right? You have to start. And it's a habit. And, you know, we always tell people, look, you know, maybe you don't like water and maybe you don't, you know, maybe, but you know what? It's amazing once you start drinking water. And you know what? The thing is that we do in our office, I'll just remind uh, our listeners, what we do in the office, we check the viscosity of blood. It's one of the first tests that we do in the office on blood. And a lot of people who have no idea that they are that they are dehydrated and they don't have enough water and they have thickened blood and they don't know it because they have no sign of it. They don't necessarily bother them, but they have no mechanism to tell them to drink water. You just got to start doing it and then that mechanism will start working. And we recommend to, you know, in that area of two liters of water a day. And I'm going to tell you, friends... Uh, when I tell you this, because this is personal for me, I didn't like water. Well, I remember when we first started, this is years ago, when we first started talking a lot more about water, uh, and you, you know, you, you started drinking a lot more water. Oh, yeah. And I, every day, I, seven days a week, I get up, and I do not even have my coffee. Now, my coffee is my reward, right? Yeah. But and I have my half a liter of water out of bed. Yeah, big glass of water, big, big, you know. You know? And then, uh, and I I have a minimum of two liters well, of water. Well, you wake up dehydrated, and that's the thing, yeah. right? You, you wake, don't realize I mean, that. I mean, think about it. You wake up, and you're in a fasted state. You're dehydrated. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, yeah, absolutely. Right? And water I mean, thins your blood out. Yeah, it's just one of those water things again. Is just, you know, it's a, it's a vitamin, really is. It yeah, really you gotta, does help you. It helps your body, and I've proven it to thousands of patients over the years. So, I mean, that's first and foremost. Okay. But let's talk about sweeteners. Yeah. Let's just really quickly, because we get this question a lot of times, and we've written uh, newsletters on this in the past. And uh, so there are a few things that we do look for yeah, in sweeteners. Yeah, and one of the things, when you look at, like, diet soda and all that, like, what they what they do is they kill your friendly bacteria. Well, that's the first thing we look at. Let's, okay. let's go through the three things, right? Okay. So the things that we always look at when we evaluate a sweetener is, first of all, what does it do to your gut bacteria? Mm-hmm. And that's a surprising thing for a lot of people. You're like, well, what is that? Why would you even consider, why is that even a consideration? Well, research is showing that a lot of these sweeteners, a lot of these sweeteners do, in fact, kill your good bacteria. Mm-hmm. And it makes sense if you look at what they're made out of. Right, so they kill your good bacteria. So a lot of these uh, sweeteners that are found in sodas kill your good bacteria. And on that note, on that note, you know, we talked about this in our last podcast. the The breakdown of the lining of the gut is directly related to aging. Yeah. So not only does it affect your brain. Right, you're, we talked about that, right? Leaky gut with your brain and everything. Leaky gut, leaky everything. Almost. That's right. Yeah. You know, it, it it absolutely does. Yeah. And then now there was a study that came out looking at the effect of Parkinson's and the digestive tract when they clip the nerve that connects the two. The vagus. And it decreased the risk of Parkinson's by a whole whack. Like it's amazing the connection between the gut and the brain. So here we look at sweeteners first. We look at, we evaluate, listen, is there research that shows that they can kill good bacteria? Yeah. So that's the first thing. So again, if you're drinking diet sodas or you're drinking these things, you've got to take, first of all, we recommend probiotics every day anyways. Yeah. Yeah, but you definitely me. should be, if yeah. you're taking sweeteners, you got to be, right? So yeah. that's the first thing we look at. The, the second thing that we look at when it comes to sweeteners, aside from does it kill good bacteria, 
is does it have an effect on insulin? And this is important. Yeah. For a lot of people, this is important. They, yeah. Because it doesn't raise your blood sugar, right? Sweeteners, and they've been shown, they've been tested. They don't for they do not have an impact on your blood sugars. However, and not in everybody, and it seems to only be in people that are overweight. So it's kind of a double whammy. They're overweight. Yeah. They try to get they try to get away from sugar. They say start drinking diet drinks. But a lot of sweeteners, not all of them, a lot of sweeteners, even though they're zero calorie, they seem to cause an insulin secretion in some people. Yeah. And the bigger you are, I think it is. Yeah, that's right, because the biochemistry does seem to change, yeah. right? So again, so does it affect the good bacteria in your stomach? Does it have an effect on insulin? That's a that's a that's a big one as well, obviously, right? Uh, those are the two big things, and then obviously, uh, we also look at the person's history, right? We look at the person's history. Are they trying to correct something? Are they like? Do they have an autoimmune disorder? You know, do they have? Are, do they have metabolic syndrome? Yeah. Those are the kind of things we look at when we evaluate sweeteners and yeah. we evaluate inflammation markers, right? You know, and there's a lot more that we could talk about in sweeteners. And we've done previous episodes on a sweetener, and we've written previous stuff on that as well. But that's kind of how we look at we look at sweeteners. First, yeah. drink water. I mean, that's our always see obviously our first recommendation. If you drink a diet soda, you're not going to die. You know, like we're we're, we're not naive to yeah. think that it's you, that's it. You're you know it, it's the worst thing you can. We're not saying that. However, definitely take probiotics. Definitely understand that. And limit your amount. Oh, your yeah. Taking. I mean, and that's the you thing, know, too, don't, right? People, don't make a living on that People stuff. have it every day, yeah. multiple diet sodas every day, right? And it also, there's also something to be said, and there's research to show this. It, there's also something to be said when our brain thinks that we're consuming something sweet. So we, we're consuming something that our brain thinks is sweet and it gets it all ready for, right? It seems to stimulate, well, first of all, it's, it gets our reward center going in our brain. It, it, it gets that sweetness thing going in our brain. Mm -hmm. So for some people, it can actually trigger a bunch of cravings, trigger a bunch of overeating after because the body will also naturally adapt, right? If you if you eating something that should have a lot of calories in it, but it doesn't because it has a sweetener in it, I can that messes with your brain. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it absolutely can mess. You 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 don't end up eating less. Your your body doesn't try to. It just it, it messes it up, right? It's just when a food is meant to have certain things in it and it doesn't have certain things in it. I think the it, it does have an effect on the chemistry of how our brain perceives that food. Uh, our tongue has a lot of. You know, once our tongue, Sensors yeah. And... So it just—it's an interesting thing, yeah. right? That they, they—they're they not as innocent as obviously the companies who make them make them sound like, right? It's yeah. just oh, it's a substitute. Yeah. They're not as—they're not. It's not a health food. No, oh, no. It, I mean, there's no value to it whatsoever, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. There's there. It doesn't bring any nutrition to them whatsoever. Now that being said, there are a couple of sweeteners that we do like. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of sweeteners. Uh, that you know that we we do like and I, we use them ourselves. Uh, we're big fans of erythritol, yeah. right? Because a it doesn't kill. Research has shown it doesn't cause an insulin response. It doesn't uh, kill Friendly good bacteria. bacteria. That's right. So we like it. Yeah. Uh, it cooks well, yeah, right? We use it. Well. Like uh, I'll <laughs> use it. Uh, you know, like I, one of my favorite things. It's is uh, like a um, you can use that in. A whole whack of stuff. Like you can even use that to sweeten. For example, if you want to make a heavy cream to put berries in, you can sweeten it a little bit with erythritol in there. Just whip you it in there. You can do it too with uh, with the yogurt, right? Like the Greek plain. Yeah, and sweeten some people it with don't that. Like it That's instead right. of putting the fruit. Or in like or an right. avocado pudding, right? Yeah. You throw some uh, erythritol in there, and then you know, again, depending on what your goal is, you can throw a little bit of honey in there. But again, if you're insulin resistant and all that, then you want to avoid that stuff. And so there's a lot of things you can do with it. So mm -hmm. we, we we do like erythritol. Uh, st some stevia is good. Uh, some stevia is more processed than anything else. Not, all stevia is not created equal. That's that's yeah. for sure, yeah. right? So anyways, we wanted to, uh, you know, we wanted to spend this episode talking about that uh, Diet Coke study that came out. Uh, just again, because we got so many questions. 
So many people asking us yeah. about that. So again, we want to thank you for joining us on this episode. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email us at info at martinclinic.com. Uh, or you can, uh, you know, check us out on Facebook. Uh, I know you do a Facebook live every Thursday morning. Yep. Uh, and you know, send your questions in. Uh, yeah, you'll answer those questions uh, live. And what time? Usually around ten thirty ish. Yeah. You're jumping on there answering questions Facebook live as well. Yep. Uh, so again, we want to thank you for listening and have a great day. You've been listening to the Martin Clinic Wellness Podcast, brought to you by MartinClinic.com. We are truly thankful that you took the time out of your busy day to listen. Talk soon.